Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And in this presentation, uh, we will be taking you through how we automated testing for Gov CMS. I'm Joseph, and this is Tara. And we are both developers in uh, Gov CMS service operations. As you may or may not know, Gov CMS is an open source web content management system and a hosting service based on Drupal and developed to help government agencies create modern, affordable, and responsive websites, while is making it easier to collaborate and innovate. Gov CMS also help agencies to reduce the technology and the compliance burden on government agencies. Gov CMS is managed by the Australian Government Department of Finance. Gov CMS currently hosts over 350 websites, the majority of which runs as SaaS using our Gov CMS distribution. Our team manages the Gov CMS distribution and releases to the platform. We have roughly two weeks release cycle. During this release cycle, we update a range of things from new module requests, module updates, core updates, security updates, and break fixes. During every uh, release cycle, over 900 SaaS web, uh, websites have to be updated. Uh, around 290 production websites and 580 websites, like non-production websites. For security updates, we have service level agreements that need to be met. Uh, which can be as short as 48 hours for highly security issues, seven days for critical, and 28 days for less critical issues. This presents us with a problem in getting testing done within our time frames. If we were to rely totally on human tester or manual testing, it could require a testing time of three to four days. After analyzing a few products, we decided to go with Cypress, which offered us flexibility and compatibility for our specific needs. As you already know that, our challenge is that we need a way to streamline testing and to shorten the length of time, which led us to look at the automation. So now my colleague Tara will talk about what Cypress is and why we are to it. Uh, thank you, Joseph. Um, so as mentioned before, uh, Cypress is an end-to-end -end testing framework um, it's based on JavaScript and it also runs on a web browser. Uh, you can use it to do end-to-end -end testing. Uh, you can use it to integration tests, uh, unit tests, um, and also it uh, fits within the GovCMS open source ideology as well uh, because Cypress is open source. Uh, Cypress has a range of features uh, and some of the ones we use in GovCMS uh, screenshots and videos, time travel, uh, debuggability, automatic rating, uh, and network traffic control. Uh, we find uh, uh, Cypress gives us many benefits. Uh, for example, um, reading, writing, and uh, maintaining test cases is more straightforward. Um, and it's written in JavaScript, uh, which means that most developers and testers are familiar with the technology. Uh, another example is that uh, Cypress uh, 
closely mimics uh, our human tester navigating a site from the browser. Uh, one such activity uh, is the login form for Drupal. Uh, we, are, we can mimic a fair login uh, or a successful login um, and test out the functionality from an authenticated user's perspective. Um, we can also uh, test uh, search functionality, uh, for example, um, and behaving uh, like a typical user who visits the site uh, and does a search. Uh, currently, uh, we set up preview sites for all our live sites um, where we do uh, major upgrades, uh, such as a major Drupal core update um, for a set time period. Uh, we use uh, Cypress to scan and navigate all the preview sites um, to make sure there are no broken pages. Uh, this helps us to uh, troubleshoot any potential issues early in the preview stage. Uh, another benefit is that uh, these test cases um, can be run from CI if you have CI uh, or you can uh, run it locally uh, independent of the user's technology. Um, Cypress is also open source and free to use. Uh, now uh, we would like to show you a short video of Cypress in action. Uh, the video will show you a sample of a Cypress test case um, running over the GovCMS website. Um, and afterwards, uh, we will show you the results of that test case. Uh, so that was the end of the uh, end of that test uh, case. Um, uh, the test run took roughly 11 seconds uh, to test this website. Uh, and if we compare that to a human tester, it would have taken at least <coughs> five minutes to uh, run through the same test case. Uh, so you can imagine uh, this multiplied over 300, um, 300 plus websites. Uh, we have gone down from two to four days to test uh, this uh, uh, two to four days to test all our sites uh, to half a day to complete our testing. Uh, this not only frees our testers time, uh, but also we have cost benefits uh, associated with that. Uh, we get to know of any potential issues earlier uh, and it's less error prone uh, because it's scripted. Um, these are some of the pros uh, that we have found when using Cypress within GovCMS. Uh, so to start off, uh, we have reduction in uh, time to execute. Uh, there is low learning curve for our team, uh, ease of maintenance, uh, technology agnostic, um, can uh, integrate with CI CD processors and it can run locally. Uh, some of the cons we found are that um, you need to have storage if you want screenshots and or videos uh, and you need some human effort to uh, validate false positives. Uh, some of the lessons uh, we learned during our journey to implementing Cypress are um, you need a dedicated um, resource to set up the initial environment and test cases. Um, you need buying from your dev team uh, and test team uh, and start small. Uh, for example, start from the um, less complicated test cases and move on to the um, more complex test cases. Uh, I'll now hand over to Joseph to show you a demonstration of Cypress. Ah, here we go. So uh, I'm going to show you closely point again. some examples that we took from our practice. Hopefully, yeah. these examples can give you some idea of how we can use the Cypress to improve your test case. Yeah, here we go. So uh, to start our examples, 
we uh, put for uh, simple examples here and put them into two groups. So the first group is PVT. We can assume that PVT happened after a highly uh, critical uh, release or deployment, and then you want to quickly test your website. We put uh, some examples here. The first example is a baseline testing. And the baseline, baseline testing basically, uh, let's assume that a human tester want to browse your home page, your user login page, and your search page, and maybe randomly pick up some uh, pages from your website to see if those pages can be displayed correctly. And the second example is that based on the, uh, the first example baseline, how we can extend these test cases to cover, for example, in this example, I put two resolutions here. One is desktop, another is a mobile word. And the second group is a demonstration group. I put two uh, typical user cases here, test cases here. The first one is content. For example, uh, at from us, as a distribution, we want to test if a content uh, author can create, for example, create blog events, those pages correctly. And then the second example inside this group, uh, which is like we are want to test if a user can be created or canceled correctly. Uh, so let's start with uh, like some videos to give you some ideas. But before we start, uh, I may want to show you uh, the basic uh, like setup. So that's, we are using a software called Tilt, and this is currently a part of the Docker. We use this to quickly test uh, and give you this demonstration. So from start, we have a fresh installed GovCMS website. Uh, as you can see, it's a fresh installed website with four uh, like default content tabs, a blog, events, uh, FOI requests, news and media. And when we click the people, we can see the default user groups. You can picture your, your own uh, user groups. So this is like the default CMS user groups. We can see content author approval, uh, set administrator, and two default tuple user group. So here, uh, the content author is the one we want to test if this content author can create uh, the content. So let's start from the first example and the PVT, and uh, which is the baseline testing. So uh, as a human tester, for example, you have a website. Maybe, of course, will be compl complex more than this one. Uh, we can use gaussmas.gov. We use as an example, gaussmas.gov.au. Yeah. As you can see, you may have a website like this. And uh, after, uh, for example, a security uh, urgent update, you want to quickly test. So uh, this is a home, a home page. Uh, and then you want to pick some random pages. You may have some interesting pages. For example, this gallery page. If you keep scrolling, you can see it is quite long. It's very long, basically. <laughs> now let's see how our Cypress can do this. Let's go back to Cypress. Uh, I have a video here how you want to see a live uh, example. Uh, let me see. I'm not sure how you can share the live one. So, yes, we have a live one. Let's run a lab uh, like a test of baseline test here. So as you can see, two groups, and we want to run the baseline to test govcms.gov.au. So from left side, you can see the country surprise is running. From right side, you can see currently surprise is checking and auto scrolling from top to bottom. So it's finished in 14 seconds. So this is a baseline testing, really fast. And it will give you a video and a screenshots on every page after you finish every page. Then you can, your tester 
uh, can review those screenshots, and the developer can also check each step if you found any errors. So now we want to uh, make it a little bit harder to test if those pages can be uh, displayed correctly uh, in both desktop and mobile world, which is the second example. Uh, let's give it a run. So as you can see here, here's a desktop version. Then the mobile version will be later. Yeah, you can see this is a mobile. And you can see Cypress can do the auto scrolling to let, uh, for example, that gallery page. So this is like the second example is that how we can extend our test based on the baseline and make it more uh, complex and more suitable for your business requirements. Then uh, we can see the uh, demonstration examples. The first example is that uh, we want to uh, test. Let's start from test. Uh, we can create users. So let's see the test. So you can you can, so we can see some errors, right? Of course. <laughs> so uh, what we can do is that uh, we can check what happened from left side, or we can click rerun because uh, of uh, this script I copied from our current test cases. And so from here, you can see Cypress can simulate a human tester to type in the username, password, those things, and uh, to create the users. Let's give it a rerun to see if anything wrong. Yeah, as you can see, and uh, the user is created and this user is deleted. This is quite useful for our distribution uh, release testing for now, but it could be useful for your business cases. Uh, so now we can see the second example is that we want to test if a default content author can create users. So as you can see, this user log in at first and then trying to uh, create the, the content. I put a very simple example here to only like to have a title here. Of course, uh, you can upload files, put attachment to uh, upload the media, do a lot of things in your own uh, test here. And uh, one good thing about Cypress is that it's not only can give your tester and improve our current process, it's also very useful for the developer. For example, if we go back to check each step, let's use this as an example to create a news and a media. You can see from left side, there's some like small numbers there. Uh, this is basically the test steps. The first step, for example, to visit this page. Second step is like type in the username and password. And uh, it's like a human tester, basically. For example, uh, we can type in the title and then do more checks here. The last step, as you can see here. So for a good test, always remember that uh, to log out the user and even delete the user for to keep your test. Are clean. This is why, after all, we didn't see any content because the whole process we want to test if a user can create a content. And uh, yeah, that's the, the goal of your each each test. So let's uh, go back to see uh, some code here to see how simple it is. I'm not going to show you how com complex it can be. Of course, uh, the test cases can be very complex. However, it can be very simple from start. So uh, we can put some very simple, for example, baseline test here. As you can see, it's uh, like the, uh, 15 lines of codes. And, and it's very simple to read. So uh, this is very simple. However, you can extend it. And then you can check more here. I just put it as a quick example here. So as you can see, at first, uh, visit the home page. You can put a link. You can put something there. And the second part is visit the login page. The third part in search page, I put uh, a side price command here. 
basically you can type in your search keywords, uh, which can simulate a tester to type in. So you can extend it and think and picture that, for example, in your website, you may have a complicated or complex workflow, for example, like a web forms. Then you can use this way to test the web form and to test the feedback. For example, if people type in a wrong password or type in a wrong email, you can test the different messages based on such technology. And uh, so here, based on the first uh, baseline codes, you can see that uh, you can extend Cypress to test the different resolutions. Basically, similar codes here, you just extend very quickly. So this is very easy for not only for your developer, maybe your tester, if they know how to write JavaScript, uh, they can write uh, the Cypress test cases uh, very easy. Then uh, here is how to how you can create the contents. Uh, as you can see, it's a slightly more codes, but every line of code is very clear. If you have the experience to write, for example, some other test cases, you may, you may notice that this is more close to a human and more close to like the JavaScript. And uh, uh, years ago, uh, some other tests, for example, B hat or some other tests, were, uh, even now it's very, very popular. But the techni technology gap uh, to use the, any software like Cypress, it will be uh, much more easier because this is basically the JavaScript. Uh, so this is uh, also a uh, user. It's even simple. But however, uh, here, of course, the line uh, is less than other tests. Here, uh, as we can see, uh, we are using a site uh, like the creator user. This creator user, this is a custom com command. This is not native Cypress command. The cast command in Cypress means you can extend your like the repeated uh, like the, uh, steps and wrap them into a command there. So we can I can give you a quick example about how uh, this custom command here is. As you can see, we can have some uh, cast command here. Uh, so for example, create a user. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it clear. So uh, we are use, running a local Drush command to create some default user. Of course, you can also test the UI, uh, UI create a user. Basically, is that uh, you find the those uh, class or ID name, then you then just follow the each step to test them. So and those custom commands can be shared. Uh, across the, your team or even with the Drupal community. For example, Drupal community may already have those custom codes there and wrap them inside a, a project or a module. You can use that module as a foundation to save your time to write all the custom comments here. Yeah, so uh, this is basically is that those are examples from the codes and uh, from the from what we can see here. Yeah. So if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please feel free. Yeah, sorry. Uh, um, do you have to be a JavaScript developer to write the test cases? No. Or there's a user interface that you can... Uh, you mean like, oh, so this is a surprise is that you don't have to be a JavaScript script developer. So from what I know, Cypress even have some extension from Chrome or uh, a product called Cypress Studio. Basically, it can record your steps. For example, if you have a uh, like uh, any tester and there's a Chrome extension, if you click the button to start, all your step will be uh, converted into a Cypress script. Um, so is this a standalone program, or is it a part of the GovCMS platform? Uh, so uh, this currently is that we are using Cypress for two goals. The first one is to do the PVT. As you can understand, currently we have too many 350 uh, websites, and a human tester cannot do it. So this is for too suitable for our business case. The second part is that to improve our current release. 
cycle, we want to do more small release and more releases. So with uh, Cypress help, uh, we can run it in CI. For, for example, if we have a small module update, we don't have to wait a human test to, to approve it. And we can use this to help us to do more frequent and small release. Yes. And we will share the code. Yeah. Yes, so like if a GovCMS customer wanted to use this for testing on their own website, yeah. their GovCMS website, would GovCMS be able to help them do that? Uh, so uh, currently, uh, I'm not sure the business side, but I think uh, this is definitely some way, uh, a good way that we want to do. And uh, if you're interested, maybe we can talk with our Gaussian product owner or any like uh, Gaussian people. Uh, Alistair, uh, he will be happy to help you. And of course, this is our goal. We want to help uh, all the Gaussian client can use and can share. We can use a similar way to improve our testing. So uh, this is a really good question. So basically, we are testing all the GovCMS websites, uh, websites. And if you are with PASS, you may have to do it by yourself. However, uh, for all the SAS sites, um, after every deployment, we run this similar PVT automation to basically to test all the sites to see if they can be displayed correctly or not. And hopefully, this can help our agencies to uh, like to have a like the, their website functionally. So uh, this is also is like some lessons we learned. Uh, after deployment, some websites or small agencies, they do not have people or enough developers to do these checks. So when they realize something went wrong, it may be like days later or even weeks later. Uh, so this is also another reason we have to run this on after every uh, like the release or deployment. For example, uh, on Tuesday or Wednesday morning, we may do a GovCMS deployment. And after the deployment finished, we run this script. And uh, not only by this script, our, our human tester will also review the screenshots. This is why we mentioned about you may need a cloud uh, storage because the data is huge. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks. This is a, also a good question. To be honest with you, we didn't think that far yet. <laughs> but but we, we, we hear we heard a lot uh, like the coming from community saying that uh, can we join us our own surprise inside the whole CI process uh, in from the GitLab. I think Alistair uh, he will happy he'll be happy to, to know that we have such a demand. Uh, however, from technology side, I don't think there's any like blockers there. And uh, yeah, I think we are aiming to, to help. And uh, basically, is that if you have such demands that our government teams know, we are happy to help. Yeah, currently, <laughs> it's, it's not. Yet. Uh, just one last question. Yeah. There is actually a GovCMS task customer where we have around 300 uh, Cypress tests in place for, for, for a particular part of the, for, for a particular part of the website. Yeah. And there are actually going to be uh, around 300 more, around 600 new tests. It takes around 30 to 40 minutes on local. We are actually, uh, so if we'll actually put it on the CI, so what are the best practices around it? So if we'll actually put it on the CI, it's going to take 40 minutes. 40 and then another 10 minutes for the GovCMS CI yeah. to perform all of the rest of the operation. Yeah. So that's actually 40 minutes of lag time for a developer to just see that the changes he has accommodated are passing on to the GovCMS. So what are the best practices around it to reduce that time? Or what would be the what could what would the solution be? Thanks. This is a very very good question. As you guys know, is like although surprise is easy to be like to use. However, uh, if you have a, like a lot of like test cases or you have a big website 
it can take hours. Uh, for example, to test, uh, to do this PUT test for 350 websites, even we put it into a very quick way, we ignored a lot of checks, unnecessary checks, of course. It takes about three to four hours <laughs> to, to do this. So uh, I think from my quick thought about how we can improve the CI process is that from what I can think is that at first to run it in an independent CI, for example, another uh, third party CI or, or a separate CI pipeline to, to improve the performance. Otherwise, if, for example, if currently we run on every like the Cypress tests inside our current GitLab CI, it might consume a lot of like resources and may impact RSS websites. So this is my first thought. Uh, for, from Gauss CMS, we may, we may provide a, like an individual pipeline for your CI testing. This is something we can discuss. And the second thing is that you may run your CI, for example, in any other third party CI. For example, uh, not a good example, maybe Circle CI or, or other CI or your local. The third one is that to think about to run those tests in parallel. As we know, currently Cypress is running line by line. Yeah. So what, what I can think is that you may put your uh, test cases into groups. Then, uh, for example, uh, you can try to use the, the, the Cypress Docker. Then, for example, you have three groups, group A, B, C. Then you can spin up three Docker container. Then first container run group A. Second uh, like container run group B to make it uh, like uh, tests running in parallel. Yeah, thanks. Apologies, but I still have actually a follow-up question. Uh, yeah, uh, feel, free, feel free to, to ask us. So, uh, so, so for, for the Docker CMS task, so it will actually follow an independent CI. So those tests, then, then those tests needs to be managed separately in a separate repository. Yeah. Is the, that the recommendation? Uh, it's, not, it's not official recommendation. <laughs> this is my personal thinking is that for run, personal thinking is like to run any tests, uh, do not test the production side unless you are running a PVT to save the, the production resources. Uh, if you are, for example, develop some new thing, you can test it in your local or other environment. The reason is that Gauss CMS currently is a shared environment. And if you are like, for example, taking too many resources, uh, could be in trouble to impact other sites. Of course, we can, we can talk more uh, after this presentation. Uh, I do have some personal thoughts here, but uh, yeah, thanks. Sure. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for the nice presentation. Uh, security question. I noticed that you are using a uh, Drupal login in the Cypress code. How do you inject the user in the site? You know, like to be able to log in as that user from your test. Uh, this this is a good question. So this is a, uh, uh, of course you can see here it's a fresh install website. There's no TFA protection. Uh, in real life, in Gauss CMS, we do have TFA, and I don't think currently we can uh, run a surprise uh, with the TFA module enabled. This is uh, like an example that show you that how we can test it without TFA module enabled. And in this example is that uh, I create a default user at first using Drush with the, because it's test, right? So for example, that content author example, I create, I create a user uh, before the test and with a, with a username and a very simple password, your name is password123, so that uh, the Cypress can use that preset uh, username password to log into a site. Um, part of your uh, presentation you mentioned about um, after you've kind of done your test, um, there's some kind of cleanup where you're deleting yeah. user and content and so forth so that your next test can run. Yeah. Um, does Cypress provide certain templates um, um, for you know, a Drupal site that can easily clean up um, your task afterwards? So uh, Cypress does has, uh, we can think it's like hooks, mm -hmm. like before hooks, after hooks, similar as Drupal. Cypress itself doesn't have such like Drupal things yet. However, of course, uh, as we sh showed in the last, uh, likely uh, from the codes, you can have it in your custom codes there to wrap up those steps. Right. Yeah. So then you're responsible for Ex it. Exactly. And, and put them into the hook. Right. Thanks. Thanks. Hi. Hi. Uh, I just have a Uh, 
first thing, why would you ask it to be relevant? And then you have to uh, That's my question. Well, yeah. The second one is, uh, I suppose you in uh, Cypress holidays, or some people say it comes in as a kind of ice. So basically, uh, it's, it doesn't, it's like the one, okay, so question, uh, you have, you mentioned, you could mention that it, it was a story. Story. So, yes. does um, finance actually pay everything? <laughs> so, so the se second question is that like, now it's like uh, f uh, we are using surprise, but we are because surprise, is, I don't think you need to pay a license unless you are using their, for example, their uh, uh, more advanced features. And if you want, for example, like dashboard, and if, if you want to currently, I think. Uh, couldn't remember like one or two developers can visit access that dashboard. If you want to share, uh, for example, those advanced features with others, you may need to subscribe to Surprise. Regarding to the storage, uh, basically the user stories from Gauss MS is that, uh, for example, our PVT testing, we have to keep those screenshots and the videos there. Yeah, so Cypress itself has uh, like official and also community extensions to help so that you can uh, that have those screenshots and upload them, for example, to S3 bucket if you have a similar requirements from business side. So back to your first question is that why we didn't test before. Uh, so it's, for example, it's like uh, we have a highly critical issues, we have to release it to 48 hours. Basically, we do not have time. <laughs> and as you know, we do have a really, really small team. We have about four uh, Drupal developers and only one tester. Before we run this uh, automation, uh, we have to wait until the human tester gave us the green light. Thanks. I think it is the last question. Thank you, everyone. If you have any further questions, Please go to our Gauss MS booth or find anyone with a shirt. Thanks. Thank you.